Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will discuss six of Melbourne's strangest train stations across the 400 kilometers of track that make up the Melbourne Railway Network. So, without further ado, let's get into it. At number six, we have East Richmond. This station is unique in the fact that most trains don't actually stop here and instead run express. Hence the famous announcement. Stopping all stations except East Richmond. This means that despite being just two stops from the city, it's a pretty quiet station, with most people likely choosing Richmond or Burnley instead, as those nearby stations have platforms for all tracks. On one side of the station is a CRT display, which is very rare at Melbourne stations these days. The other side has a much more modern electronic display. The only way to get between the platforms is by climbing this long ramp and crossing the Church Street Bridge, then heading down another ramp to the other side. On both platforms, there are displays showing tram departures for routes 70 and 78. The 78 runs along Church Street, visible from the station, and the 70 runs on Swan Street to the north. Of the few trains that actually stop here, most of them are Glen Waverley trains, with trains to Belgrave and Lilydale very occasionally. There's a small waiting area that doesn't look that great, but I've seen worse. Overall, East Richmond is a nice, strange little train station close to the city, provided that you can actually get on a train that stops there, of course. Willison Station is probably one of the most obscure stations of the whole network, and for a good reason. It's hard to even get there. There are two entrances. One requires you to go down here, despite there being no indication of this being an entrance to the station. You then walk down this long ramp to get to the station. The next entrance is this. Yeah, Willison Station is pretty much hiding from sight. There's also one more entrance on the other side that's a bit more obvious, but still on a small side street. So, this begs the question, why does Willison Station even exist? It's less than 500 meters from Riversdale in a straight line, the shortest distance between two stations on the network. It was actually built to serve players from the Riversdale Golf Club who were too lazy to walk to Riversdale Station, so they complained and got their own station built. The golf club moved from the site in 1927, making the station effectively useless. Willison is one of the least used stations on the Melbourne network, with an average of 350 passengers on weekdays and only 100 on weekends. It has no information displays, only buttons. Services departing Williston Platform 2 are the 11 Alamein, stopping all stations to Alamein, departing in 9 minutes. Due to its close proximity to Riversdale, as well as the Riversdale Road tram crossing, where trains have to slow down, many people have attempted to disembark at Willison, then sprint over to catch the same train at Riversdale. Maybe I should try that someday. At fourth place is Macaulay. This station is strange because it's situated underneath the busy City Link tollway. There's also a level crossing right next to the station, for Macaulay Road, where the station gets its name. This would probably be the hardest level crossing to remove in Melbourne, since going above the road is impossible, and going in a trench is also probably impossible because of the Mooney Ponds Creek to the west. There's also two pedestrian crossings on either side of the footpath, but no way for pedestrians to get to the other side of the street. It wasn't as loud as you may expect, but the surroundings certainly weren't the prettiest. The station is a brick building from the 70s, and has this small waiting area. They don't have displays, 
instead having everyone's favourite green button. <laughs> Macaulay also has a bus stop for the Route 402 bus to East Melbourne. Overall, Macaulay Station may not be the nicest or prettiest station, but it certainly is interesting. I mean, they built a whole freeway on top and the station survived. With the level crossing removal project going on, many stations around Melbourne are being rebuilt to look more modern, but Baronia Station is a glimpse of what they could have looked like if built in the 1990s, and it hasn't aged well. This station was rebuilt in 1998 in a trench in order to remove the Baronia Road level crossing. The concrete on the walls does not look good, and the colours of the station clash pretty horrendously. The station does have modern screen displays, and there's these big blue boards with the word Baronia on them, which definitely feel out of place. Inside is not much better. There's a small waiting space at platform level with these green seats. You can take these stairs, or the lift, which takes you to the main concourse with a staffed customer service office. Heading left here takes you to the exit at the Baronia station bus interchange. Overall, Baronia is a pretty ugly station that does not look or feel polished at all. There are no other stations like it, making it one of Melbourne's strangest train stations. Hayington Station on the Glen Waverley Line is the only station in Melbourne that does not have step-free access. There are a total of 35 steps you must go down in order to get to platform level, and a further 56 if you want to get between the platforms. This station is quite interesting since it's only 4 stops away from Flinders Street, yet it feels like you're far out in the suburbs. Partially because this station is located in the rich suburb of Turak. There's actually a small trail near the station entrance that leads all the way to the next station on the line, Kuyong. There's another thing that's interesting about this station though, and that's the fact that this station has an entrance that leads directly to a school, St. Kevin's College. This is the only place in the entire city where a station has a direct connection to a school, and surprisingly, a private school, not a public one. I'm sure it must be very convenient for the students. The station also has some great views of the Yarra River. And finally, we have Box Hill. This station is located underneath the Box Hill Central Shopping Center. And while it's not technically an underground station, I wouldn't blame you for thinking it is. The station was built like this in 1983 to coincide with the opening of the shopping center above it. An interesting thing about Box Hill is that the station doesn't actually have a Platform 1. The platform used to exist during the construction of the station but now the track has been removed and it doesn't have a use. Platforms 2 to 4 are in use, however, with Platform 3 carrying peak hour express trains. There's stairs, escalators, and a lift to take you to the shopping center. There's a few other entrances that are blocked off. Also, fun fact, Bucks Hill is the only station where you can order Maccas while waiting for your train. Outside, you can see the row of Mikey gates and Mikey machines that mark the entrance to the station. On the wall is a giant sign showing you which way to go to connect to the 109 tram line and the bus interchange. Box Hill is an incredibly busy station, the busiest on the line and the most used outside of the inner suburbs, with more than 3 million passengers per year. And that was Melbourne's strangest train stations. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to, you can join my Discord server, link in description. But if not, I'll see you next time.